would like to start my session by asking you a question. Anyone here who likes playing computer games? Maybe you can raise your hand. Wow, almost everybody. Anyone addicted, like really gamer? Okay, a few of you. Thank you very much. So, let me tell you a true story. About two years ago, my wife discovered an adventure game called Machinarium. And after she played the demo, she asked me to buy the game. And it was almost Christmas, so I was like, hell yeah, I'll buy the, gun, the damn game. But inside I was, yes, one Christmas present less for my wife. You know how the, the shops are around Christmas. So I was really happy to, to have such an easy low hang fruit, fruit to, to, to pick up. But unfortunately for me, you know, there was a payoff. So what happened at that time, I wasn't playing at all games. Because when I was younger, I spent a lot of time, I mean really a lot of time, just gaming. So I quit entirely gaming. And after my wife started to play the full game, Soon she got uh, some really hard puzzles or riddles to solve and she turned back to me. Hey Mihai, can you help me with this one and with this one and so on. So for the next three or four days, I was there playing the game together with my wife. And at the beginning, I wasn't happy at all, right? So it was my Christmas vacation. I, I, I had other plans to, to, to do. But soon after this, I got caught by the game because the game was, was really nice. So, as I said, the, the game name is Machinarium. And I'm gonna show you a short screencast with the game to better understand why I fell in love with the, with the game in the first place. So as you can see, it has a, a pretty unique graphic. It's, it's really dark. And it's an adventure game. Basically, you have to, to control this little robot, robot and you have to help him to, to get back to, to, uh, to his town, because he was dumped here as, as a garbage, you know? And it is pretty cool, actually. And all the graphics is amazing, right? Anyone here heard about Machinarium? Okay, few of you. So, you know what I mean, right? Now, you might ask yourself, okay, how is this related to, to my session, right? Well, the answer is pretty simple. This game uh, was available or was created using Adobe Flash, and as a direct result, it was playable directly inside your browser. And although you were in a browser, right? The graphics, the quality of the graphics, and the sound, and the game story itself was uh, so great that it created an immersive experience. And to tell you the truth, it was far better than many games sold at that time as, as real uh, games, right? Like uh, 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 games from, I don't know, Ubisoft or EA and so on. And this was just a little game coming from, from an independent company, a little company from the Eastern Europe, and it was great. Now, you have also to, to understand that this was happening in 2009, right? So a cool game, playable inside of a browser in 2009. And back then, a game like Angry Birds and playable inside of the browser was simply not possible, right? So it was really magic. Now, still, maybe you don't see the point, but fast forward two years later, in 2011, Machinarium was released to, to iPad. And surprise, surprise, in many markets, including US and Romania, is a top selling application, right? So people are really buying this game. You cannot play it for free. You have to pay, I don't know, $4 or something. And people are voting for this game with their wallet. And from, from a business point of view, this game was, uh, was extremely cheap for this little company to bring from, from the desktop to the iPad too. Why? Because they use Adobe Air to package the Flash game they created initially. They've done some tweaks in order to accommodate a new device, an iPad instead of a desktop. 
But in the end, it was pretty cheap for them to go from web to, to iPad too. And also, they are working right now on bringing the game to, to Android using, again, Adobe Air and, uh, and the Flash platform. And in the end, this, is, this was extremely important for them because, as I said, they are a small company. And with little money invested and time, they were able basically to reach the broadest market, right? So they are on the web, thanks to Flash Player, and they are available in uh, Apple App Store and soon to be released on, on Android markets. And if you are curious to see how the game uh, is performing on the iPad itself, I have also my iPad here, you can play the game uh, during the break. I hope my wife won't find I bought the game for iPad. But I think it's more fun to show you a short screencast with a cool guy playing the game. Come on. I said too many I words. I bet make iOS. Something is going horribly wrong. So these are all scenes from, from the game itself, different levels, and this is the original music of the game. So the game was put together by a, a true team of artists. They have a real musician who in his own time is playing jazz and all kinds of uh, music and so on. And also, if you are curious, the source code for this game, it's like one gigabyte with all the assets, all the sounds, all the images. Is this cool or what? Not really, huh? Hard to impress. You can do it better, right? Okay. Now let's move on from the Czech Republic, because this is where Machinarium game is coming from, to Romania. And I will tell you another true story about one of the most creative companies in, in this part of the world, called x -Fried. And they are from Timisoara. And recently they published a game, an iPad game, that although it's quite simple in terms of gameplay, it takes a lot to, to, to master the game. And also you can see it as an educational game, because while you are playing, you, you learn that, for example, water is made out of uh, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen and so, so on. And I'll try to show you the game on my iPad. Let's see. So now I have to, to make uh, uh, molecules of uh, salt and I can control this little guy by touching these two buttons and I carefully have to pick up the right color for, for these drops like this and I have some bonus things to, to pick up like to extend the life or getting a big mouth and so on. If I get the wrong drop then I lose uh, some of my life. So, as you can see, it's nothing complicated, but the graphic itself, it's, it's beautiful, right? And the performance is great. Now, what is cool about this project is the way they approach it and the way they execute it. Because they have great expertise in, in creating flash applications for testing. They want to a huge number of, uh, of uh, prizes for, for their creativity and for their products. But when it comes to creating applications for, for tablets, for smartphones, they didn't have any. Neither uh, native experience nor uh, flash uh, mobile experience. So they basically started with nothing, right? But they had a great plan. So, so they set their goal crystal clear. 
they said, we want to create a complete game ready to be published to, to App Store in one week. Okay? So this was their grand plan. And what they did uh, do next was moving out of Timișoara, because they are from Timișoara, to Satu Mare. Now, I don't know if you know, I don't know, Satu Mare, how it looks these days. Basically, they, they did some sort of a boot camp, right, with nothing to distract them. And being able to focus like 24 hours almost a day from dawn to, to dusk, they were able to achieve uh, many things in seven days. So they went from nothing, then they found a t-shirt they were doing like years before as an exercise of creativity, and on that t-shirt they drew uh, the character they used on, on their game. And then they come up with a, with a game plan and a game story, and finally they were able to, to create the final game ready to be published in, in, uh, to the App Store in one week. And the team itself was one designer, one developer, and of course one project manager, right? So three people. Now, in terms of business, Stefan, the guy who, who runs the, the company, is telling me that it, the, the game is selling uh, quite well. Uh, they don't know anything about how to, to, to do advertising for, for, uh, for application on App Store. So just, I don't know, people who, who were really curious about the game, they, they paid uh, the game and they bought it. Now, another thing that you, you might observe is that in the worst case scenario, if something wrong or horribly wrong uh, went wrong, they would have waste only one week, right? So, the bet itself was quite good. Either I lose one week of my time for free people, or I can really understand how I can create something for, uh, for iOS in, in this example. And I can test my team, and I can test the technology, and I can test the market, and I can test my idea finally on the market. So one week bet for this, I think it's, it's pretty good. Now, at this point, you might ask me, is this, your, is this Flash platform good only for games? And obviously the answer is no. Actually, we are seeing more and more uh, applications built all over the place, all over the world. And many of them are enterprise applications. Other are uh, consumer, like productivity tools, utilities, uh, applications for big brands like Rossignol, for example. And uh, we are seeing, as I said, more and more day by day applications created uh, with our tools. I have another example here. It's called ComQ. This time we have to move uh, to States. It's created by a company from, uh, from California. And it's a, it's a, a pretty cool application for uh, managing tasks. Right, so if you are part of a team or you are a self-employee or freelancer, probably you have, typically you have a huge to-do list and you have to manage that list. And one way to do this is by using this application. And this application works across all these three major platforms. So it's the same, it's the same on the playbook, you can see here. And I can check my inbox, I can edit uh, a task, I can add filters like oops, like setting some flame colors, like how much uh, effort and uh, time I should allocate for this task. I can add tags, of course, and I can set the due date and so on. So for example, I can do like this. And also, if you are part of a team, then you can use this one together with, uh, with your teammates. And if you are a manager or a project manager, you can forward tasks to, to some individuals to, to, complete, to complete them, right? And as I said, it's available on all the major stores. And here I'm, I'm showing you the same application, but this time running on, on an Android phone. As you can see, in, in this instance, the UI is a little bit different, right? Because the screen size is smaller, it has to they had to change a little bit the UI to accommodate the, the new screen size. But other than this, you have the same features. 
you can add a task, you can edit the task, and you can forward the task, and so on. It's a cool application. You can use the application for free as long as you don't want to use it uh, as part of a team. In this scenario, you have to buy some uh, some support in order to use their servers for uh, for syncing uh, services. So, anyone here knows how to build air applications for mobile? One people, two, three. Okay. So the easiest thing to to understand how you can build mobile applications using the, our platform is to understand these three uh, building blocks. You're going to use Adobe Air Runtime. Adobe Air Runtime extends the Flashware Runtime and allows developers to build standalone applications for desktops or for devices. Next, you're going to use probably Flash Builder, which is an, uh, uh, an ID based on Eclipse platform available on Mac and Windows. And it's free for education. Are any student here? OK, so for you, it's, it's free. For others, you have a 60-day trial period, and after this, you have to buy it. And finally, you, you write your application using ActionScript, and you can also use the Flex Framework. Flex Framework is an open source application framework that speeds up application development. So what you find once you start reading about the Flex Framework, that of, it, it offers a large number of UI components, uh, optimized for desktop, optimized for, de for uh, devices, like uh, capable of uh, being used inside of a, or on a touch input based uh, device. So you can throw, for example, in a list in order to, to scroll the list up and down, and of course you can touch a button or a pop up button and so on. Also, it offers a complete API to, to connect to cloud services like Twitter API, Facebook API, or to server-side services. Could be a PHP uh, services, could be Java, could be .NET, it doesn't matter, right? And again, using these three building blocks, you are able to reach the Android devices, tablets and smartphones, the iPad, iOS, uh, the iPhone, and iPod Touch, and finally, uh, the BlackBerry Play tablet. Now, from a technical point of view, you can think about Air as being an abstracting layer that hides all the differences between these different devices or different operating systems. So for example, I'm, I'll just give you one or two examples. The API for taking a photo, it's the same. It doesn't matter your code will be run on, on an Android phone or on, or on an iPad or a Blackberry. As a developer, you will use the same API and you will write the same code. And if you think about this, it, it means basically that you are able to create a common code base for your application while still being able to, to reach all these different operating systems. And this directly translates into a productivity boost because you invest less time in order to create an application that spans across these different operating systems, right? Remember, I'm talking about uh, one runtime, Adobe Air, so you'll have consistency across all these different devices. I'm talking about one tool, Flash Builder, or if you are more like a designer, probably you, you'll want to use Flash Professional. I'm talking about one language and framework, ActionScript and Flex. And Depending on, on how you architect your application, I'm talking about one code base. Now, what you see here is an utility application called, called uh, Caltrain Times. And Caltrain, it's, uh, it's used by the people who commute in the San Francisco Bay Area in order to go, for example, from San Francisco to uh, Mountain View or to San Jose. So it's, it's a rail, uh, rail system. And if you use this application, you are able to find, for example, the nearest station 
to you, right? It uses geolocation in order to pinpoint you on the map and to check what is the closest rail station to you. And also you can find information about departure and arrival times for, for the train itself, right? And as you can see in these uh, screenshots, the application is quite beautifully designed, right? It, it looks really nice. I, I don't know, I'm not a designer, but to me it looks really great. And I think this is another big advantage for the Flash platform, because when it comes to, to create highly customized and highly designed and, and beautiful applications, I think it is far easier to do this using Adobe Air, ActionScript and Flex than native. And also you are able to tap in, into a large community of uh, developers that, or engineers that know uh, both ActionScript and Flex or just one of these two technologies. And if you want to give it a try, I have here a couple of links. So you can go to adobe.com forward slash go forward slash try forward slash flash builder. And you can download the tool and give it a try. The tool itself, it will help you to create a project, right? It's an ID, but also you, uh, it helps helps you to, uh, to test the project either using a physical device, if you have one, so the tool will be able to package your application and send it to, to your device, the device being connected to your computer using a USB cable, or uh, you can use uh, the simulator that is provided with the tool. So if you don't have an iPad, you are still uh, able to, to try the code on, on, the, on your desktop. And also, when it comes to, to the time when you want to publish your application, so you want to get the APK file for Android, IK file for iOS, or the bar file for the playbook, the tool itself will help you to, to create the final package. You can find more about uh, mobile development at adobe.com uh, forward slash devnet, Adobe Developer Connection Center, and also on my blog at corland.org. And I think we have four minutes for uh, Q&A. If you want to get in touch with me, my Twitter account is mcorlan, and you have here my blog as well. So, any question? Right, please. Uh, how do you solve the issue with different UIs on different devices? So, if you want, want the, your application to um, make like the, the People are using native application on different devices. So, how do you solve this issue? Whether you make thank you, whether you make uh, just a different UI, and maybe it's uh, up for how the application was organized to have the same logic flow. Because we already at our company, we already had some experience with uh, building application that will target multiple uh, multiple iPhone, uh, multiple uh, mobile operating systems, but it really didn't turn well in order of uh, user interface. And what did you use? Uh, sorry? What did you use? We have actually tried uh, also uh, the Flash approach and also a web, uh, web based approach. So, it is possible to, to create with uh, action script and flex applications that look like one. Obviously, they won't use the native uh, uh, UI controls, except the text input. The text input under the hood, when the application is compiled, actually uses the, the native text input, input from that platform. But other than this, all the other uh, UI controls, buttons, list, and so on, are not native. But you can skin your application to look native if this is what you want. And there are people who already started to create uh, skins or libraries. There is one for Android, and there is another one for uh, for iOS. And uh, you can you can actually have a single base code. And at the runtime, you have all you need in in, uh, uh, in terms of APIs to know on what device are you running, what is, the, what is the resolution, what is the DPI, and you can choose what CSS file to be used for, uh, for that scenario and so on. So, if this is what you want to achieve, it is possible. 
However, my advice is like in the case of the, of the ConQ application, just unleash your imagination, think about the best user experience that you can create, and don't spend time on making your application to look just like another Android app or iOS app. Because in the end, if, if you take a look at how people are rating these apps, they really don't care about this. As long as your application is usable, it's user-friendly, it is performant, and so on. This is, yeah. If you use uh, Adobe Air, can you call uh, native APIs on Android and iPhone? Uh, to this day, yes and no. Uh, starting early October, so in a couple of weeks, you will be able to extend Adobe Air yourself. So what does it mean? It means that you will be able to create using native code, Objective-C or Java or C or C++ or whatever that platform supports, an extension that uh, expose some native operating system API or uh, creates a bridge to another application. And then you'll be able to use that extension uh, in your Air application. Again, this will, this will be available in Air 3, the upcoming uh, version, that will be available uh, early October, so in less than two weeks probably. Last question. We haven't announced anything other than we are working with Microsoft and we'll see. And the last one? <coughs> yeah, we haven't announced either anything about Bada. I think with Bada you have also uh, some limitations in terms of the hardware. I think they, they don't use the latest or the most powerful processors on the BADA phones. I'm not sure if they are using RV7. Or so it could be a problem. So Adobe Air has some restrictions in terms of hardware. It must be uh, uh, 256 megabytes, I think, was the, the limit for the memory, for the RAM. It must have a processor with a certain uh, GPU and the processor must be with RMV6 uh, architecture <coughs> and you must have also, I forgot what else, at least I think uh, 600 megahertz in terms of CPU. Okay, thank you very much for listening to me and if you have more questions I'll be happy to answer them, just send me an email. I have one quick question. Yeah? One quick question. Yeah, cool. Um, I don't have a lot of time to learn new programming languages. I'm surprised that no one asked this, but should I learn to use Adobe Air or should I invest my time in learning HTML5 and why would I do one over the other? So, if you are a developer, the answer is uh, yes. <laughs> if you are a, a, a project manager or a company owner, the answer is again yes. So I think it all depends. If, if you are creating applications for more than one platform, then Adobe Air and Flex can really help you to create applications much faster and far easier. If you are looking into creating web applications that are inside of the browser and you want to run across all the major platforms, then HTML5 is the answer. Because as you know, on iOS device, you can't have flash. You can you can have air but no flash. Where HTML5 it's it's okay. It runs in Safari mobile. Great, thank you. Thank you very much.